What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to check out this awesome new design tool called Crate. Dread Labs. So before we head into the video, I just wanted to be completely transparent about this and say that Crate is actually sponsoring this video. I will however be completely honest about my opinion on Crate during this video. Anyways, today I'm going to make a new artwork in Photoshop using a tool called Crate. If you're a music producer and you're familiar with Splice, basically Crate is the same thing but for graphic designers. Crate is essentially an asset library where you can find different types of design assets such as textures, fonts, shapes, all stuff like that. And you can download them, drag and drop them into Photoshop in exchange for credits. You pay a monthly fee for a certain amount of credits and credits stack each month. So if you don't use all of your credits by the end of the month, you'll just get some extra credits for the next month. So basically, Crate asked me to do a little demonstration video and show you how to use this app in a design process. So I've decided to do an album cover using Crate assets and uh, what I'm going to do is make an album cover for Joji's Nectar. Alright, so we have Photoshop open and as you can see, I'm also having my Crate window open here. Essentially, when you load up Crate, you'll probably see this home screen and this basically contains a lot of assets. Uh, these aren't made by Crate, but you can actually also browse assets made by the community. So these are other designers that also sell or uh, redistribute assets. Some of these are free, some of these are paid. Anyways, let's just see if we can do some like super uh, like mixed media kind of artwork uh, and yeah. And I'll show you how Crate works along the way. Alright, so the main part is that you can see these different asset packs and as you can see I see these 20 scrap images and you know, being that we want to do have a kind of like mixed media appearance, uh, this might be interesting. I'm just going to enlarge this window so you can see it a little bit better. And as you can see, as I'm hovering over these assets, you can get these for free. So this, one's look so this one looks pretty cool. I'm actually going to click on download. And once it's finished downloading, you can see that it says drag me. So we can just drag and drop this into Photoshop. It's as easy as that. If you want to have an overview of all of the assets that you downloaded, you can just click on the My Crate tab here. These are some assets that I downloaded when testing this out. And I'm actually also going to show you how easy it was to download and install a font. So I'm just going to click on click to open and just click on install and that's it all right so let's see if we can do some typography here and i think if we type out crate you can just see which fonts you got from crate and let's just have the nectar paper thing on uh, one of the torn paper textures I, I think i saw that somewhere ah uh, yeah here all right so here we have an overview of the torn paper assets and i think this one should do it so let's just click on it have a download and drag it into Photoshop. All right, so I saw some like crunch textures somewhere here, industrial textures. Perhaps I could use this one for a nice displacement map. So let's just drag that in. I'm gonna make this black and white. And we'll just duplicate this to another layer. Call it displacement map. If you've never seen me done this in detail, there's a tutorial on my channel if you're curious. Alright, so in here we can just delete the texture and make our typography into a smart object. And give this a displacement map. So this gives it a little bit of a rough edge and let's just go in here and make the text black. And I'm actually going to make another displacement map so that the uh, text will, will fold with the wrinkle here. Alright, so now it's time to blend this thing in. And I'm going to do that by having the underlying layer, have the white colors blend in with the text here. Uh, let's see if we can, uh, you know, have this fade a little bit more. Ooh, any dirty smudges. I think that's a very nice one. So let's just get this one and this one. And let's drag both of them in here. So what I'm going to do is invert both of these. And go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Do the same with this guy. And let's just delete them for now. So what I'm going to do is make a mask here. And as you can see, we now have a brush of whatever was visible in our document just a while ago. And I'm actually going to use that to create some dust and scratches on this. And it's only going to be visible in the texture. So let's see if that actually uh, makes a big difference. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. As you can see, this is the mask that we have so far. So let's just uh, increase the contrast on that a little bit. And actually remove the bottom part here because we don't really need that. And I'm going to 
crunch in the light and the dark values here. So let's see what this does to our text. Right, so just so you can see the difference, this is with the layer mask and this is without it. So this gives it a little bit of extra realism. All right, so we don't really need these characters to be the you know main uh, part of this album cover because that needs to be Joji, of course. So let's just drag in an image of him and uh, see if we can add some textures to his photo. All right, so let's make a new layer and paste it in this picture. So this is actually the album cover of Nectar, if I'm not mistaken. So let's just see if we have some like texture that we can put over this. I saw one that I really liked, uh, this one, the various vinyls. And we have some nice looking edges here. I really like this one. As you can see, these are the classic ones, guys. You know, you, we've, we've all used a texture similar to this one back in the day or, you know, recently. These, in 2019, these used to be one of the most popular uh, textures out there. So, let's scale this up. And grab them here. Put these to blend modes. Okay. Um, so, we don't really need this circle one, I feel, I feel like. Maybe on the top of it. Uh, it's maybe too much. Let's just delete it for now. Uh, we have a nice distortion on his face, however. So, let's just group these together and call it Joji. And put it underneath our paper texture here. Maybe give the paper texture some shadow, perhaps. Oh, that's nice. Creates a little bit of depth, as you can see here. All right, so let's see if we have some other like mixed media looking uh, things that we can use here. The duct tape assets and the sticker assets, those are always nice to use. I'm not sure what this is. Let's see what it is. Ooh. Some nice PNG assets. Ooh, perhaps we can do some burnt paper things. Ah, here it is. Let's grab this one. Perhaps we have like another cover of him. Uh, we can layer that over the texture here. I know the picture is already looking kind of lo-fi, but let's just make it a little bit worse by going to filter gallery and adding some grain. So what I have here is a clumped grain with a low intensity and pretty high contrast, and then a pretty high intensity soft grain. And let's just clip that to the burnt paper. So let's just put the blend mode to screen and scale it like this. All right. All right, let's grab one of the torn paper textures again. Um, maybe this one. Let's drag that in. And let's grab another one just for the hell of it. Maybe this one. So let's go to home. So we have a couple of fonts here. I really like this one. Let's go with this one and open it. Let's see what it's called. Volta, add in Joji and maybe make the color of the text a little bit like reddish or something. All right, so let's clip that to the paper. And we'll do some custom brushing where it's like supposed to be like ripped off. Actually going with the normal brush for this one. Let's make it harsh. And maybe like a little bit softer and change the blend mode to dissolve. Like this. So this obviously looks a little bit harsh because if we look at the uh, like mask itself it's like super harsh and that's because we chose the dissolve blend mode but let's just blur that out a little bit with a super soft Gaussian blur through four perhaps let's see what that looks like that looks better okay uh, and now I have a blend in with the actual paper and you know what might be cool I saw this distorted or distressed text uh, thing here or was it here Let's see what this, uh, how this works. All right, so let's just grab this one. Drag that in. Oh, that's actually super cool. So we can just drag in the smart object and if we double click, we can just change the design here. All right, so I think we should change it in here. So let's see, um, let's grab one of the like album cover stickers because I also saw that somewhere. Here, album mode, 
Let's grab this one. There are some nice icons in here. All right, which one did we get again? The compact this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's just make the other two things invisible. Make this dark. Save this up. And look at this. Nice. All right. So, and if we just save this up. There it is. Nice, nice, nice. This looks really cool. It's also really easy to just change this. Uh, maybe add some scribbles over on top of this because I saw some scribbles from like the free uh, community part here, the free collage pack or college pack. I'm not sure what it was called. Let's do the broken heart one because Joji sings about love. I feel like and blend it in with the paper texture. And I just want to have this like be over the compact disc. So what I'm going to do is hold Control or Command on my keyboard. Uh, hover over the thumbnail here on the right of the heart and on the like compact disc part I'm just gonna hold alt or option when I'm clicking on the layer mask so basically I just made a layer mask from the heart on the compact disc so that the compact disc would be invisible wherever this is so that it looks like the heart is still like the ink is still getting over the compact disc part here all right so let's see what else is in here and uh, I think then we can call the day Let's just grab some tape, I guess. Let's just drag in this plus one. And actually what I'm gonna do is grab the Joji text and scale it down without affecting the mask so that it looks a little bit more readable here. And add some drop shadow to the duct tape here. Just a little bit. All right, so I feel like it's missing one thing in the middle here because the composition is kind of going to the sides here. Uh, so let's just add in one middle part. And I think I haven't cool idea for that so let's go back to the uh where was it the distressed uh, let's grab the super destroyed one we'll drag in this design uh we're gonna make sure that this is actually on top of like a piece of paper or something go to the middle here and we'll just group this and call this joji threshold and you might already know what we're gonna do here now let's just grab an image of joji and we'll just go into the distressed image here double click remove these guys let's drag them in here go to image adjustments and we'll do threshold or is it and we're gonna remove the white color here so we only have like a black transparent image. Save this. As you can see, we have like a very vague, uh, like printed looking shape of him. So it's pretty cool. And we'll clip this to the piece of paper here and have it blend in. I am actually quite satisfied with this. Just one more thing, we'll add some grain onto the old cover so that it matches this one a little bit more. All right guys, there you have it. A mixed media style cover for Joji Nectar made with crate assets. So a couple of final thoughts. So basically this app is insanely useful, especially if you're just starting out and you don't have the budget to buy all of these different asset packages. Basically I was able to get, I'm not sure, around maybe 10 asset packs uh, for just one like monthly subscription, which is I think seven bucks or something. So it's not even that much. So yeah, this gives you access to a lot of different assets instead of having like the go to all the hassle to buy all of the assets at once. Uh, so it's really really nice uh, there's also quite a variety on here especially like mainly focused on the niche of graphic design that we're all in right now so it's also really nice the creators of this app are really up to date and up to speed on what's like popular within the graphic design industry of us right now so that's really nice another thing i want to say is i'm also dropping a freebie on create very very soon it contains 10 y2k shapes that you can use in your artworks so there aren't really cons out here. Basically the only thing that I would say is uh, this app is gonna need a little bit of uh, bug fixes and improvements.
improvement sometimes. Uh, not really with the loading times, but there are some interface parts that are yet to be developed or are still in development. Uh, from what I've heard from the creators, so yeah, those are coming along the way. That didn't really affect my design and user experience at the moment, it's just like some back-end stuff I feel like. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. The app is very much usable and it's working very fast, as you can see. As you saw in the video, I was basically able to drag and drop assets into Photoshop within seconds. So that's really uh, all there is that you need to do with Create mainly. So yeah, overall, super happy with this app. Uh, it's, I think, a very nice step in the direction that we as designers want to go in. Uh, making it easier for ourselves to work with assets, have an own asset library, have that like nice visual overview of whatever assets you have purchased or have in your, uh, you know, computer. And of course, the cool part is if you want to contribute to, you know, this community, you can just join Crate and upload your own assets as well. And all in all, I was feeling like I was doing a pretty nice job with doing this cover within uh, I think it was like maybe 20 minutes that I made this in. So yeah, all in all, Crate is a pretty cool app. Alright, so if you want to join Create yourself, you can actually get one month of premium for free by using the code DREADLABS at checkout. You can join Create by clicking on the link in the description. So before we end of the video, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Create for sponsoring this video and to my patrons for supporting the channel. So if you do not know, I'm actually able to give you guys free videos on a weekly basis thanks to my sponsors, but also thanks to my patrons. My patrons get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role on the DREADLABS community server. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos such as how to create a death metal logo from scratch. If you don't have the budget to become a patron right now, that's completely fine. Leaving a like, a comment and a subscribe also does a lot for the channel. So with all of that out of the way, this was Tom from Dreadlabs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.